As global citizens, how can we use our talents, actions, thoughts, words, and resources to improve our society? At ASC, we use these gifts to help support <laughs> to promote environmental and social awareness by supporting Casa de Vida. I'm Dominique Tomé. I'm Tamar Verdec. I'm Tine Kenny Horster. I'm Estefania Vázquez. And I'm Ana Lucia Rivera. And we aim to achieve the goal of promoting environmental consciousness and social service at a young age through the monthly donation of recycled materials to Casa de Vida. At the beginning of 2014-2015 school year, the Environmental Club thought that it was time to pick a project and stick with it for a long time. One of our advisors came in contact with Casa David, and after a brief meeting, we knew that Casa David was the organization we wanted to start helping. In Honduras, people have to come to the capital city to receive treatment from a hospital known as El Seguro Social. El Seguro Social, more formal name, is El Instituto Hondureño de Seguridad Social. The hospital offers a wide range of services to our rightful claimants of the country of Honduras. Every person who has a job and receives a salary has the right to use El Seguro Social in all its services. This institute gets its money from a certain fee every employee pay pays. The company gets this money from taking a certain percentage from everyone's salary. This money is later paid as a whole from each company. Uh, when each employee re uh, reaches the age to retire, they get a pension that depends on how much money they have they have donated along the years. Overall, the Seguro Social has the same objectives and purposes as the Medicare in the U.S. People come from all over the country to Tegucigalpa to the Seguro Social with their family members, and they have no place to stay. It can take hours or even days to be treated, and the and people who accompany the patients in very harsh conditions. While their child, husband, or wife is in the hospital, these people have no haven and often have to spend the night on the floor or benches. These people have no place to shower or, and don't know where their next meal is coming from. Casa David has provided a home for these people to use during their visit to El Seguro Social. It aids the companions of the patients in the hospital and it has become a lifesaver and a miracle for many. Casa David is a home dedicated to providing a temporary shelter to meet the daily needs of the companions of family of hospitalized patients in Tegucial, Honduras. Casa David was founded by Marvina Hooper, an American volunteer in honor of Dr. David Harms and his wife Joyce. Dr. Harms was a former IMB missionary who faithfully served the country of Honduras for over 30 years. This shelter was founded in the spring of 2014. The three main pr principles, as Marvina will mention in a moment, are to spread the, the word of God, have financial transparency, and do everything with excellence. In Casa David, each of these guests receive dinner, breakfast, dinner, a hygiene kit, spiritual support, safety, and most importantly, a welcoming place for them to stay. Okay, and the three principles we said I need to be one day, I don't even know where it came from. We were in the middle of a meeting, and I said, okay, this is what we need, and this is what we stand, this is it. And I don't know, it's kind of like inspiration or something, but it is. The first thing was, number one, we will never go away. Number one is telling people the good news of that God is with them, for them, and telling them about Christ and sharing God's word. Number one. The day we don't do that, we close the doors. That's the most important. Anybody can give a bed, anybody can give food. We want to give them life. And that's what we believe wholeheartedly that when God's word is on, that's what the father does. That's how you grow up. Number two is financial freedom. Every person has money. They steal money. So you're not even sure that the money I give you is going to go to the universal cancer or whatever. So people are kind of scared of their money. They can be sure that here in Honduras, every penny goes to the ministry. It's all recorded. We have an incredible treasure who's like, 
The kids, along with them, made a mural. And it says, El Mercado Seguro, Niños Trabajadores, which means a safe market and triumphant kids, which make them feel like heroes. Um, Mary Mercado Seguro, Niños Trabajadores, which means a safe market and triumphant kids, we are creating an awareness campaign with the preschool students in our school and using part of the recycled materials they donate to help us out here in an arts and crafts activity. We started the project on the month of December and we made little Christmas trees to represent Christmas time. We cut little Christmas squares, sorry, little newspaper squares, and then stacked them in a balloon holder from biggest to smallest. And we practiced teamwork, creativity, and the improvement of, of their fine motor movements. And these are some of these are some of the moments we experience with them. Um, um, here we're explaining them what to do and helping them because it might be a little bit hard. Um, this is a finished product, and there they all enjoyed them. And this was a total hit with the kids. They all wanted to take one home or to make one of their own, and this reaction ensured us that we were on the right track. For the New Year's Kinder Activity, we planned a snowflake shower. So we cut out snowflakes out of recycled white paper and make the kids decorate them. They were able to write a New Year's resolution in it, for example, getting better at reading, soccer, math, etc. They were able to propose a goal to themselves and learn that the white paper can be recycled to make decorations. Here we educated them on which materials can be recycled and they were having problems writing their New Year's, Year's resolution, so we wrote some prompts that they could copy. They decorated the snowflakes, and the final outcome was the snowflake shower. On February, we taught the kids that uh, magazines can be recycled as well. We made cutouts of two hearts. The big heart was made of recycled white paper. And the small heart inside it was made of magazine one, and we added a popsicle stick in it for, the, for them to take home. So, um, while we were on the activity, the kids wanted to cut out the, their favorite picture in the magazine, so we changed our plans, and they wrote nice messages for their family members. And we also had the privilege of sharing the activity with Ms. Pereira, the preschool principal, and our superintendent, Ms. Jenkins, who really appreciate our efforts and learning going on. Okay, one of the things that we, one of the things that we also liked about this project is that we are creating some sort of bond because we've been working with the same class since December, so they know our names and they. They're happy to see us every time we come. For example, um, one time I was at the birthday party of one of my neighbors, and there was this girl that was in my class, and she came running up to me and she said hello to me, and she knew my name, and it felt very satisfying to know that we were creating an impact on her. Going back to what Dominique mentioned, that one of the things that really captured our attention was that Casa Abid had a recycling program, and they use recycled items to, like, they sell them and they gain profit. And, but they don't only do that, but they also like teach their guests how to live more environmental friendly and have a healthier lifestyle. We really wanted to do a project like this that had something environmental, but also that had something social so we could interact with them. So as the environmental club, we decided to collect recycled items as you have seen with Tineke and Estefania with the little kids in preschool. And then we use those items and donate them to Casa Vida, so they have like a contribution from our part. But as I mentioned, like we want really wanted to interact with them and we wanted to provide even a little bit of happiness to these people who are going through so, so much hard times knowing that they have a like relative in the hospital and they still like have no place to stay and they have found shelter here. The first few months were challenging because we had to get to know the place and its needs. We had we had many meetings as you can see here because as they have mentioned you can't you don't know how to help if you don't know what needs to be done and what the needs took place. The first thing we got to do was an event in our school called the Winterfest, 
in the winter fest you rent a stand and you can sell like anything in it we managed to get one of these stands for Casabia. you can see here they they sponsor they have a sponsor who gives them natural soap, soaps and they get gain a percentage of the profits and the sales were not as good as we expected them to be but what we did get to do was to make a lot of propaganda and that was very good because the more people that know about an organization, the more people that can help it. So awareness is a key factor in an organization. So it was very good for a lot because not many people know of this and people can tell someone like, you know, if you can come here and have a place to stay. Then we had to plan a visit because we really wanted to go and see the people. And with the advice of Carmen, who is our link to Casa Javier, she told us that we should like go in a, around like a time where people would get there and bring food for them because they usually get their food from donations or if not like the quantities are not that large because it's like a non-profitable organization. So on December 8th we took food and we went and we took 100 traditional food, tamales, chustacas, tortillas, and then when we got there we were received with open hearts and we were taking a tour around the house and we left our the food in the kitchen. The rooms, we were all, it was all very different from what we expected. The rooms were very spacious and big as you can see here. <laughs> like they each have lockers and so where they can store like their belongings and not be afraid that someone like, will take them because it's a very safe place. And it was all very beautiful and one of the most beautiful things were these that are like Bible verses written in each of the walls so that they all feel like they know that they have someone and that they have hope and not to give up because it's difficult when you know that someone you love is in dangerous conditions but each of they really try to make you feel like you're not in any house but make you feel at home so this was very nice also they have <laughs> they have a whiteboard where they write, write down like all the prayers and they pray for everything that you need whatever is it a job or for a family member or even something that someone may think it's insignificant but they all really want you to make you feel welcome and loved and that's I found that very nice also like you have seen the picture before we were here are all the newspapers we could collect with preschool and we really want to give them to Carmen and she was very grateful for her contribution see so many kids there then we got we started serving the food and the guests started coming in they came in at like five but we soon had to leave and we the first like we started meeting the people the first lady we met had been in Casabi for three months now and then we started listening to all how Casabi had changed these people's lives and how it helped them and we started serving food and we two prayers were given one was given by me, and then the other one was very special. That was given by the guests in Casa Javier. They prayed for their families, but also for ours in an action of gratitude for the help that we have given them. And that felt very satisfying and to all our hearts, and I think it's a moment that we all remember. Also, Dominique gave some very <laughs> beautiful words. And then we unfortunately had to leave but we were very happy from the visit because it was something that we, it was a goal that we had for a long time. And we were finally starting and we have worked so much on it. And I think we were all very inspired and proud that we got so far. And there's other people that are involved in our project. We can see here Diana, Juliana, Diana, Juliana, Paulina, Gisela, and Valeria, who were for, unfortunately couldn't be here, but we couldn't have done everything we did without them. And our goals for like Casa Vida have been to make a monthly contribution and visit to it to like, keep on this project, which it's very satisfying for each one of us. We were very excited uh, when we learned from our teacher that we had been invited to Casa Vida's anniversary. It was, we didn't know what to expect from the ceremony because you know, sometimes you're invited to anniversaries so and you think it will be boring or something. But this one was really touching and so happy. We, we got, we're so happy to be there, as you can see. And one of the things that really impacted us was that the founding members, as 
you have seen in the Meeks video, Marvina was there, and because they're from the States and they live there, but they came all the way here and they gave so many stories that you it really stopped, make you stop and think, and it was very nice. Also, one of the, one of the stories that really impacted us was um, was given by a guest in Casa Aviv, as you can see here. No, as you can see here, she's uh, she gave a testimony. She's a former guest in Casa Aviv. Her name, like, this is a woman, and this is her baby, and this baby looks like any other baby, but she's 10 months old, and in that short lifespan, she has been through surgery four times, and all of them have been open heart. And she was taken from her, they, they both come from Olancho, it's a, it's like a town out far away from the city. And the little girl was taken from her mother and when she was two days old, to, because she was in critical condition. And then her mother came after her and she had just undergone a C-section surgery and she had no place to stay. And if her, then she found Casavi, and if it were not for this, like shelter, she would be sleeping on benches or on the floor in the hospital waiting for her daughter. But fortunately, they got she got to spend three months and be well taken care of with only 20 lempiras, that's like a dollar, and waiting for her daughter. Now they're, they're both very healthy and they're okay. And that's something that really impacted us. And also, the little girl's name is Milagros Juliet, which I think is a very suitable name is in Miralgos, in Spanish means girl. Also, like, in, in Casa, like, this was just one of the stories of, the, like, 1,000 people they have helped, and, like, the over 8,000 food, like, the, like, servings they have given and everything. People come to Casa Aviv and they find shelter, and they find happiness, and they have, find comfort and compassion, and they listen to the word of God, they have hope, they grow and they believe in that they can have something better. So we would like to conclude our uh, experience by watching this video. Okay, it's game time. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what we want of you is we need help. So, a, you need to help us with Casabir. As you have seen, we use we use recycled things with preschool wait, with preschool kids. So, a, we want them to feel part of it. So, what we need from you is. We're going to debate and talk about it, some, of some ideas. So what are you going to do? Like round one, talks about materials. And how can round two talks about how can we uh, collect them. <laughs> round three talks about how may we use the materials in uh, arts and craft. So we'll begin. <laughs> So, I'm um, going to sign you a number. Please remember it. Then, partners. Please choose a partner. What is Okay, um, uh, the first round is grabbing your material. So remember, you have only one representative to give give you the ideas. I think you need two minutes. You, need, you, you have, have two minutes. You saw our, explain, uh, our project of doing arts and crafts with the little like kids, with the preschool students, and that we use like newspaper for Christmas. And we use magazines for for Valentine's Day. So what we want to do is we want to get your help and to tell us like what what other materials we can collect and how we can collect them and like what crafts we like we can come up with that we can do. So the first round right now is like we like you have like samples, what materials we can collect. Like you have, uh -huh, you have two minutes to brainstorm. You have one minute because we don't have time. You have one minute to brainstorm ideas. And please choose our representative. Okay. 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 <laughs> Okay, so like everyone, you have your ideas ready? Yes. Okay, we have one person. Everyone, one of your like partners, come up front and bring your ideas. Um, would you please? Yes. Is that a nice? Would you please choose one representative in your group to come up front and speak on why we should choose your materials? Why? Why they're the better option? <laughs> Uh, it was totally not expected for me to come up here, was it? Wait. Totally not expected. Uh, what material do you use? Paper, toy, card, little cards, plastic, clay, glitter. Okay, ours. 
we're using cardboard from old cardboard, like uh, the cereal boxes. You can do different types of uh, arts and crafts, maybe posters from them instead of having to invest in, po in poster paper. Plastic bottles for decorations. You can use them to make, by cutting the bottoms, you can make it into a spiral as a hanging decoration. You could also use it to make different types of figures and like little sculptures, using that as like the body of the sculpture. Old CDs, you could uh, cut them up as they're not used, and you, because it's shiny, it gets love shiny stuff. You could use it as maybe <laughs> a banner or a decoration, something. And you, the toilet, pa the toilet paper, like the roll itself, you could use it as, as backbones to other type of scul uh, sculptures, art and craft. Painted like make little alligators from the tube and a leg and like a tail and then like a head. Yeah, alligator, crocodile, <laughs> maybe or, call, or maybe a crocodile. Or raptor. Or raptor. Okay. And our team is plastic, metal, bottle cap, glass, CDs, carton boxes, and mirror. Yeah, my team picked plastic bottles <coughs> like decorations that cut them and plastic like. Kappa. The bottle caps. Uh -huh. Bottle caps to make like art with that and like separated the colors and just make like a mural maybe. Like broken glass or old glass that you can use. There's this like thing on Pinterest that you make a bowl and you decorate it with glass. <laughs> and also ah, styrofoam. <laughs> because in school everybody uses styrofoam or like projects so it's a lot of trash. And we started cardboard, plastic, styrofoam, um, paper caps, no, bottle caps, sorry, cafeteria waste, and, and, and paper cups. Um, we pick, um, use clothes, but sometimes you have clothes that cannot be, you know, given to be reused. So you get rid of them. So we were uh, thinking of having them, you know, uh, cook them in corn so you can sew them and build blankets, a manufactured blanket. So you can even have them, you know, the small farms and give them to the Casa David and the people that stay there. Everyone can, can you know. That's very good. You can all sit down. <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't be able to make the other round because we're head out of time. But you all give your ideas and thank you very much because they're all very good ideas. And we want to thank you for coming to our presentation. We hope we could inspire you to use the gifts bestowed upon you, your talents, actions, thoughts, words, and resources to help other people that need it. We helped, and you helped, and now you help too. And we hope that we can make this a chain reaction and all of us keep on helping. Thank you. Yeah. Because of the precarious economic situation that Seguro Social is in, there, there are practically no money. And so for poor people to spend all their uh, what the resources they have on lodging would allow them less money to buy the medicine. And, and Seguro right now gets practically nothing. So this is even more important of a project. Congratulations.